Welcome to Good News Week, and the big news, the Christians are coming! Yeah. The Christians! Yeah. Oh, ooh. <laughs> to combat what it believes are plummeting TV standards, the Australian Christian Lobby has launched a new campaign called Tame the Tube. <laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> Tame the Tube. Isn't that a euphemism for something you do while watching plummeting TV standards? <laughs> Tame the chew. <laughs> the Christian lobby is demanding less smut and swearing on TV. Oh. <laughs> smut and swearing is our bread and butter. <laughs> Without smut and swearing, Good News Week would be nothing more than prepositions. <laughs> We're up number two creek without a paddle. <laughs> we can't even say number two. And it's really number one me off. <laughs> Christians! It's the Christians! The bloody Christians! And ladies and gentlemen, we can't be moved to a later slot because they find the word slot <laughs> offensive. <laughs> come on, Christians, I'll take you all on, all of yous. Incidentally, come on, Christians is also the name of our new segment. <laughs> Oh, oh, oh. They love it. Sure. <laughs> sure, a lot of swear words are banned outright from television, but they're greatly disappointed. We can still say teat, <laughs> flaps, <laughs> scrotum, <laughs> vulva, <laughs> copulate, <laughs> fellatio, buttocks, gusset, and Daryl Summers. <laughs> so from now on, every time one of us has a dirty joke, we'll replace it with the word fielding. <laughs> Hopefully now those fielding mother fielders will shut the field up. <laughs> but maybe Good News Week should be friends with the Jesus lovers. After all, we came back from the dead too. <laughs> oh, I don't like him. I don't like him. I'm going to ring up. I don't like him. <laughs> the boat people are coming. The boat people are coming. Can you hear that annoying high-pitched whining sound? Yeah? That's the Liberal Party shrieking about the gigantic surge in asylum seekers coming to Australia. A terrifying 30 boats have arrived this year alone. 30 boats, no doubt, throwing their children overboard the whole way over. <laughs> You'd almost think there was some kind of war on. <laughs> Although calling them boats is a bit like calling Malcolm Turnbull a leader. <laughs> yes. Christians and liberals in tonight. Liberal immigration spokeswoman Sharman Stone said Australia now had a completely out of control back door. <laughs> Don't tell the Christians. The opposition wants to reverse the so-called pull factor by sending a message to frighten off the boats. You know, like a, a skull on a stick, or a warning boy painted in fresh blood, or Kyle Sandylands in a dinghy with a megaphone. Stay away from Australia! Stay away from Australia! Stay at it! Stay away from us. According to acting opposition leader Julie Bishop, now there's five frightening words. <laughs> 1,300 illegals arrive in just nine months. It's chaos. That's five a day. <laughs> chaos! <laughs> if we can't process one person every four hours and 48 minutes, perhaps we need to put on more staff who speak the language. <laughs> but where are we going to find them? <laughs> And while the Liberals point their well-chewed fingers at refugees fleeing war zones, they choose not to mention the 300 Catholics from last year's Popa Palooza 
who overstayed their visas and can't be found. <laughs> this is God's country, but whether you're welcome depends on which God got you here. <laughs> and that's the good news. Thank you, good evening. Tonight, feeling naughty and playful, the luscious Mikey Robbins! <laughs> the succulent Julia Morris. <laughs> and the voluptuous Tom Gleason. <laughs> <laughs> and they're all over the cool and calculating Claire Hooper. Host of TV, burp, star of Thank God You're Here, personal trainer of the Incredible Hulk, Ed Cavalier. <laughs> and that fabulous creature from The Spearman Experiment, Magda Jobanski. Can I, can I just intervene just yes. on the pronunciation of my name because it's a bit of a thing at the moment? Okay. I could coach you. I, I said Zhubansky. No, right. there's not Zh. It's like sh, like S-H. Sure. But the best way into it is to pretend you're Dracula. Right. And you go, Magda Zhubansky. Magda Zhubansky. <laughs> See, you got I it. I got it. <laughs> Magda Zhubansky. Uh, Paul. Uh, with my surname, it's pronounced Gleason. <laughs> now, when you say the first bit, try to think of Glee, the show on Channel 10, which is a wonderful show. <laughs> Tune into, and then just think of your son, <laughs> <laughs> and you put them together, and you get Glee Gleason. I think you think of 8:30 p.m., and then you go, "Oh, it's Gleason." <laughs> <laughs> Can you just think of 7:30 p.m. Tuesday, and it's the Spearman Experiment? It's no connection, but I just thought I'd put that in there. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Mr. Cavalier, you've. Uh... Bro. You've done your TV burp. How did yeah. it all go? Mate, it, it was good. Yeah, we got to the end of the, uh, the first series and now which means I can come back and play with you guys here on Channel 10. And, and I'd just like to say, I love being at Channel 10. If there's any shows I could do here, <laughs> you know what I mean? I'm open to that. I will do anything. TV okay. burp went well then. TV yeah. burp went really well. We almost made it to the end of the first series without getting axed. Yes. <laughs> yes. Yes. Bring it over to Channel 10. We'd love it on Channel 10. That's the sort yeah. of Channel 10. It's not a seven show. Seven shows of those women and their cows and stuff. <laughs> actually, actually I, I think seven are going to launch that next year. Women and their cows and stuff. Yeah. <laughs> you play your cards right, you can be just like Good News Week. Do it for five years, have an eight-year break, then come back again. <laughs> <laughs> Although, uh, you know, I am, uh, I am starting to fall in love with the idea of women and their cows and stuff. That is... <laughs> Yeah, it's got you, legs. Yeah, maybe stick with I seven and post that. What would you yeah. do with the eight years, those missing eight years? I just, I was just uh, going through the money I made in the previous eight years and uh, <laughs> once all that ran out, I thought, better get back on the box. <laughs> oh, I, I, I was about to say, and, and then what did you do after the first six months? <laughs> <laughs> Uh, Claire Hooper, I believe the Melbourne Fringe Festival is starting soon. Uh, you have a show in it? Yes, I do. Starting on Friday in Melbourne. I can't endorse it exactly, um, even though I wrote it in a minute. Um, but it's certainly going to be a glorious failure slash success. Um, the talk poster, talk, talk it up, mate. Talk I it up. It's about, it's about a horse and a girl who live together. Well, I've seen that one. Yeah. <laughs> Women and their horses and stuff. <laughs> Uh, we're going to move now onto this side. I think it's best. Uh, Tom, you did a blistering set, I believe, at uh, Jerry Lewis's muscular dystrophy concert. I was really, really good on that night. <laughs> you were? I was, yeah, it was like, it's uncharacteristically so, actually. <laughs> you know, I was. I really, you know what, I actually, that's, it's actually the best gig that I've ever done. And I think that from now on, I'm only going to do worse than that. <laughs> you certainly seem to be dragging us all down with you as well. Yeah. <laughs> And Julia. 
Jerry Lewis, I did it as well. You were even better than him. Yeah. Well, I can't say that's factual, but it was exciting to sort of, you know, be alongside a, a bit of a legend yeah. in, in Tom, and <laughs> Jerry was very nice as well. Yeah, well, the good thing about doing it, though, too, was as you're performing, and, and you were there as well, is when I was standing on stage, I looked across and Jerry Lewis was laughing in the wings. Yeah. And I yeah. thought that he was stamping his foot and really enjoying it, and I thought I made Jerry Lewis laugh. How cool is that? Yeah. Is he the guy that did Hip to Be Square? No, that's no. Jerry Lee Lewis. <laughs> no, 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 that, no, that's um, that's Huey Lewis. Uh, <laughs> I knew it was one of them. All right. <laughs> oh, hang on, hang on. Oh. What, what am I, chopped liver? <laughs> oh. Have you done anything of interest to anybody in the last? <laughs> no, not really. All right. That's all right. Mm -hmm. We unlock the cage with seven days and seven seconds, team versus team, over a very quick montage from the week. Let's play it. Seven seconds, portable, seven seconds. Who's that? Oh, yes, another guy. Seven seconds, portable, 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 boom, 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 boom. Oh, what's that? Oh, yeah. Oh. <laughs> All right, here we go. Can we Let's watch start. them again? <laughs> no, it's seven days and seven seconds. And seven, that's it. Not no. seven days and an hour and a half and a replay. <laughs> Robin's team, do we have the first story? Yeah, the, the, that was the, the bloke stepping down from uh, running Qantas and being paid half a million dollars a week. Yeah, he was paid 11 million. And his pay packet blew out the side of a plane in Manila last year. <laughs> <laughs> Brilliant. Brilliant. Oh, no, I'm very proud of myself. Second story, Hooper team, anybody? Um, was that an Ayatollah? Hamane. 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 Ayatollah Hamane. Yeah. Ayatollah Hamane. Um, so I don't know anything more than that. Oh. <laughs> I know who it was. So, should I leave the game now? Anybody else on this side before I throw it to Tom? Uh, All right, Tom. Come on. It's, uh, it's the new <gasps> Pope. It's the new oh, Pope. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> very, uh, very controversial decision to get someone from Islam, but it's, it's the new Pope. <laughs> Disarmament. Thank you very much. It's a uh, not. Uh, I don't know anything else. On. No, no, nuclear, no, get, no, get, no, no nuclear bombs. Get rid of the, your bombs. No, he's, he's no. saying we're not making it's bombs. It's about a. Oh, okay. He's 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 saying we're not making bombs. That's what you just told me. Thank you very much. Thank you. <laughs> Paul, 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 Paul. I love you. I love you. Ah. Yeah. <laughs> uh, uh. The Robbins team. Uh, uh, the, the was it Penny Wong? Yeah, Pe Penny Wong. Uh, is, in Canberra. Yeah, this is to do with uh, emission of trading. But, uh, uh, what in particular? Uh, the fact that uh, the, the, the coalition want to uh, want, to, want to see her bits. Uh, wanted, I'm not, I'm... <laughs> uh, did she have to show them? No, well, she's saying no way. They, they, they actually want to see the, the details of the emission trading scheme, and she's saying, no, you show us your lot first. Yeah. Yeah. She's You're made the... an ultimatum. Yeah, make an ultimatum, yes. Thank you very much. They do have it. Yes. Uh, <laughs> The fourth story? Uh, it's, a, it's a... So you think you can dance auditions getting out of hand? <laughs> I'm, I'm not quite sure that's, if rugby, that's... I think you're... Rugby league? Rugby league, rugby, rugby, league, brawl, rugby league brawl, yes. Where there's some kids, so they were, there was a big brawl, and some kids got uh, banned from playing rugby league for 20 years. Was Brendan Favola in there somewhere? <laughs> <laughs> Just doing sideline commentary. Right. Do you know the name of the club involved? The Blacktown Head Kickers. They should have known that. <laughs> Oh, sexy old Obama. On, yes, doing what? Uh, 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 making a guest appearance on Letterman. Letterman, uh, yes, that's oh, right. Because what happens is Barack Obama, he always goes on Letterman because he's trying to live out his Kevin Rudd on Rove fantasies. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, but, but basically, he went on like a, a gazillion chat shows to try and uh, sell his, uh, his healthcare uh, initiative. You have it exactly. Wow. Right. Uh, the sex story. Um, look, it was a picture of the Channel 10 logo. That's right, wasn't it? The number Channel six. 10. And it's, oh, it's well, that this very station upon which we now appear, um, <laughs> the major shareholder has in fact sold us mm. out. Yes, but we're now more Australian than we were previously. Mm, and apparently it's a very good thing. Aussie, Aussie, Aussie. Oi, oi, oi. And the last story, open to anyone. Was the UN, was oh, it not? Was it their seat? Oh, Kevin, oh. Kevin Rudd appearing to virtually no one. Thank you. Because, um, Kurt, is he still Colonel Gaddafi? I, 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 I think he's changed his name to God. Uh. <laughs> no, I remember this story. I felt really sorry for Kevin Rudd because everyone keeps pointing out that there was no one there left, left there in the audience, but any comedian will tell you, when you're headlining, 
and the support act goes for too long. Yeah, yeah. And it doesn't out of do there. well. Everyone leaves. And, a, and Gaddafi was on there. He did an hour and a half. Yeah, and, and a half. Was no funny. gags, no yeah. good bits. Not my <laughs> funny joke. Oh, Kevin oh. runs out there. He does his opener. Gets nothing. <laughs> But is it like a festival, the UN, where you go, oh, I'm going to go to this guy. Have you seen that one? No, that's quite good. Maybe I'll go to that, do you know? You, I'll go to Ukraine. And the other thing is, it was late at night. It was like 11 o'clock at night, so the whole UN's pissed. Yes. It's hard yeah. working to a pissed UN council. <laughs> they never listen I'm to the I'm idea not, properly. It's a tough room to play, isn't it, a pissed no. UN council? Oh, yeah, it's, 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 no, 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 but by 11, they're just waiting for the strippers. They are. <laughs> uh, the stories were, for those people who were confused, Qantas reveals that... That's, that's, that's got the comedy, hasn't it? Uh, despite only working for five months of the financial year, former boss Jeff Dixon left the company with an $11 million payout. Further proof, the financial crisis is over. At least for Jeff. You know what would be really good is, um, if when he left the company, they just made him sit down on the tarmac for a while <laughs> and say, oh, we just, we've got some technical problems. And, uh, so you can't leave just yet. Could be half an hour, maybe. <laughs> just or wait. just make him travel in the economy for the rest of his life. The Supreme Leader of Iran denies the country is covertly developing atomic bombs, saying, we fundamentally reject nuclear weapons. Apparently, they're planning to reject them in the direction of Israel. <laughs> Uh, of course, Iran is going to fundamentally reject nuclear weapons. They're fundamentalists. They do everything fundamentally. <laughs> Actually, the, the, their biggest ban is fundamental as anything. <laughs> Penny Wong sends Malcolm Turnbull an ultimatum demanding the coalition deliver their amendments for the emissions trading scheme by October 19. But how can they be expected to formulate a concrete policy for global warming? They're not even sure it exists. <laughs> Turnbull dismissed the demands as a stunt, saying, we're ready for an election any time. Strong words, considering he won't be in it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. A 16-year-old from... Oh, damn you. Man, what a game this is, eh? This is a joyous game. <laughs> it is good. I'm Thank loving you. it. A 16-year-old from the Blacktown City Rugby League Club is banned for 20 years after breaking an opponent's nose and eye socket in a vicious brawl. One female official said, I've never seen anything like this before. Oh, except in other rugby league games. <laughs> Barack Obama goes on the hill. Oh. Barack Obama goes on the healthcare offensive on The Late Show with David Letterman, the first appearance by a serving president. He's also the first American leader in eight years who can go on, are you smarter than a fifth grader? <laughs> <laughs> and why not? As, uh, as Tom said, Kevin Rudd has been on uh, Rove and Sunrise and Malcolm Turnbull will soon appear on Red Faces. <laughs> and, <laughs> and if he's not careful, biggest loser, Canadian... <laughs> Canadian company CanWest announces plans to sell its 50% stake in the 10 network, giving more Australians the chance to buy shares in this once proud broadcaster. I have to say, this is the first time the owner of a television network has gone down on me. If you buy... <laughs> if you buy enough shares, Micah will even come over to your house with a sham wow and a bottle of baby oil. <laughs> And finally, Prime Minister Kevin... Oh, what... What a surprise. That's not a surprise, really, is it? OK. Careful. How far do I have to go back to get under that? There we go. Ah, oh, it's a game now, isn't it? Where are you going to... Where are you going to stop? Where are you going to stop stuffing with me? Oh, there. That this is... Quite... It's quite humiliating, everyone. We can... <laughs> All right. And Prime Minister um, Kevin... Sorry, there's a, li there's a little bit you can use here. <laughs> You'll hang in there. That'd be nice. See, you know what I like about this bit? Is poor people can't see me because they don't have a widescreen. <laughs> And Prime Minister Kevin Rudd makes an historic address at the UN General Assembly an hour late to an empty room. Aww. Aww. It was Kevin's big moment and sadly no one was there. It gave him terrible flashbacks to every single one of his birthday parties. <laughs> yeah. 
The late start meant he missed Obama's party at the Metropolitan Museum. Still, probably for the best. Once Ruddy's on the piss in New York, anything can happen. <laughs> So after one terribly important round of Good News Week, the Robins team are on 15 points, the Hooper team 20 points! Coming up, Warren! During the break, as we auditioned for Ten's new late-night show, Celebrity Master and Slave, both teams were given three clues to a recent strange but true story. You are a sad and petty little man. <laughs> and later I will probe you. <laughs> Robbins, Morris and Gleason got... A visitor. Ooh. You know what, I like... It's got handles on it for a human who might want to turn the tables on the probing situation. <laughs> oh, that, that, that table's not going to be turned, mate. <laughs> <laughs> You know, the sad thing is, it looks more realistic than an old Doctor Who episode. <laughs> we also have a placard. Eight years in the UK, and I heard this about 30 times a week. <laughs> and the irony was I had, and I still wasn't welcome. <laughs> I'm not Australian. Uh, interesting. Yes, go back to where you came from. And finally, we have this. Mm. I'm not going to sing. Now, I... Well, I'm not, because everyone knows I'm very bad at it, so I'm going to get someone to do it for me. Is like that all right? Yeah. Yeah, so could I get a huge round of applause for my mates here? Blue Juice! Hey, 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 hey There'll be food on the table tonight Strike the pen upon the stone and tell me why. If I yell out at night, there's a reply of Bruce silence. The screen is no comfort, I can't speak my sentence. They blew the lights at heaven's gate, and I don't know why. But if I work all day on the blue sky mine, there'll be food on the table tonight. Beautiful stuff, boys. Uh, you're well. You've got a new album. Well, I've got out. a bit of a cold, but I feel fine. Oh. I've got a half suck, but, but a menthol. I love this. Sweet. Yeah, I'm not seriously. Just for right? Christ's sake, eat something, son. Yeah. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> mm, delicious. That is delicious. Already. Thank you. Uh, yeah, that's the album. <laughs> Buy it, y'all. <laughs> <laughs> TV promo. Perfect. <laughs> Shameless. Ladies and gentlemen, Blue Juice. <laughs> And Hooper, Cavalier and Zhubansky have a science experiment. Ooh. 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 Wow. Oh. Wow. Oh. <laughs> you need to wear glasses for this sort of work. I thought glasses were meant to make you look intelligent, but... Not always. <laughs> they make you look hot. You look hot in those glasses. That's right, j yeah, And you look pretty sexy in that aluminium hat. <laughs> Absolutely. It's my look. We also have a rodent. Nice. You ready for more electrodes, little fella? Oh. <laughs> Great. Mm. Hey, look, that mouse has got a human ear on it. That's weird. <laughs> <laughs> and finally, this. I'm not singing either, but oh. I would love, like to introduce the very lovely, very talented country music star, Felicity Urquhart. Looking for complication. I'm 
Felicity. Well, thanks. And you've got an album as well that I'm holding up at the piers. Fancy years. that. Yeah, thanks, Paul. When did this one come out? It came out at the start of the year. How's it doing? It's doing great. I'm on the road at the moment with Troy Cassidale and Not Troy. Yeah. Oh, what's Troy. he like on the road? He's is he great, right? fun. He's so nice. Is he? He's a top fella. So oh, we're I having a great time. Stories about Troy. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> All good ones. <laughs> <laughs> I haven't heard any stories. <laughs> That song wasn't very country, though. That was a Foo Fighters jobby, wasn't it? That was Definitely a... was a Foo Fighters. <laughs> but I've got a country version in me. Maybe later you might get to okay. hear that. Okay. <laughs> Felicity Urquhart, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> That's all of it. Our teams will solve those fascinating puzzles a little later. Now to the game called Warren. Three headlines about the same subject, but its identity has been adhesively concealed by the name... Warren! Julia. Uh, can I just send up a flag that I'm not going to know anything? Yeah, that's fine. I'm just saying that I'm nice but not very bright. <laughs> and, uh, You've I'm got not... the right attitude. Approach think... it with eagerness and, uh, you know, just, you know, mm. be open. I'll just approach. <laughs> Julia, for you we have failure looms in Warren Ward. Oh, wow. Who's Warren? <laughs> Yes, yes, you're that's, not very that's, bright. That, that's the idea of the game. Yes. Under pressure from military, CIA pours staff into Warren. He's busy, that's what I'm saying. <laughs> Warren's weekend jihadis. Oh, and is that an outfit? <laughs> um, I wish I had something uh, intelligent and or amusing to say, but uh, under no circumstances is that going to come to the, to the <laughs> forefront of my mind. It mightn't be a person. Oh, is it not? Is it Warren the location, the country location in oh. country New South Wales? No. <laughs> you can... Yes, no, no, you're right. No, no, the CIA is pouring staff and military into Bathurst. Yikes. <laughs> I find you can often get uh, through this if you just throw some names in there, like yes. Katie Holmes. Yes. No? I don't think the CIA will be following Katie Holmes. Are they? To the ballet? <laughs> I did send up a flag saying I had no idea. I, I think that when Mikey said it was a place, I think he meant it, it, it might be a, a country. A big, right. So, yes. Not the country. Right. A country. A country. Yeah. In the... Uh, is it Afghanistan? No. <laughs> I, I just... <laughs> I, I, I reckon I reckon that might be it. Is it? <laughs> Afghanistan! Yeah. It's not, is it? Is that your answer, Afghanistan? I think Do you it's going to have to be. It? Let's, we could be here for days. <laughs> <laughs> Let's have a look. Shot in Afghanistan as a lady with no hat on doing a lap of honour is what I'm saying. <laughs> was that easy? Like, in did everyone else think it was easy and just me? I was the only one who didn't think it was easy. Did you guys all know it? Yes. <laughs> in the villages of Afghanistan, many young men are working for the government during the week and fighting for the Taliban on weekends. Wow. Hmm. <laughs> Say what you like about Hamid Karzai's corrupt election rigging regime, but at least they give you the weekends off. <laughs> and when the day is done, they go home to their villages to enjoy a normal weekend. Mow the lawn, have a barbie with the family, wash the car, blow it up. <laughs> <laughs> I'm less worried now I know we're fighting the Taliban Army Reserves. One weekend a month, two weeks a year. <laughs> Although, if you make it to the second week, you fail suicide bombing. <laughs> I've actually, I've actually been to Afghanistan. You were, you were Afghanistan. entertaining the troops, I believe. Yeah, I went over there, and uh, I was, <laughs> I was in Tarankout, which is one of the camps where they've got a, an army base there, and I was performing there, obviously. And what I didn't know was, I didn't know that the Afghani's were allowed inside that camp. 
Okay, like in, in Iraq, they didn't ever let the Iraqis into the camp because they didn't know who to trust. And uh, I, I went to the laundry, as it turns out, and there were some locals there doing the laundry, and I didn't know that they were allowed in. So when I first saw an Afghani, I, I yelled out, One's got in! <laughs> <laughs> I was just really worried. I was, I just saw, and I was like, Oh, oh God, one's got in! Right, and then I realised he was the... actually in charge of doing the laundry. So he was... <laughs> Because the worst thing is they reckon for every one you see, there's about 500 you don't. <laughs> and also, he might have been saying, of you being in his country, one's got in. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. Magda, are you ready for Warren? Not really, but I'll give it a crack. We have what? Shark Scares Warren. Right. Mm. All right, could okay. be anyone now. Sloshed Warren, rushed to hospital. Sloshed. Warren, okay, so it's someone with an alcohol could be a Brendan Favola situation. Mm. Just work, just you know, work showing it. Okay. Uh, Warren, sick, not drunk. Well, that's certainly not Favola. No, no, no. Clearly, no. clearly not. No. Who is um, Warren? Oh, so I'm guessing from the sloshed, rushed, the drunk thing, it's someone who is who is, has a history of drunken episodes. Oh, and yeah. and the sick, not drunk sounds like. Bullshit. So it sounds like someone who's in denial about the fact that they get drunk a lot. And then I'm putting that together with the shark scares and that's sounding to me like someone who thought in a drunken delirium that a shark went them. Am I going wrong? Great. Yeah, 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 no, yeah, yeah. You're yeah. We're right. captivated. I'm putting it together. So I'm looking at drunken, delirious, delusion, shark attack. I'm thinking David Hasselhoff. <laughs> Because I'm thinking, he had a his daughter. Mm. Do I go on to explain why? No, no, no. Oh. All right, he Those had poor daughters. Know, How 17. much do they have to? Yeah, mm. and he had a blood alcohol le level of 0.39. Whoa, that's given it a crack. Yeah, something like that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. and um, and I reckon if you had a blood alcohol level of 0.39, you would think sharks were coming at you. Mm. <laughs> Even though he claims they actually were, and maybe they were, but we've only got his say so. We don't know if they really did. Yeah, poor daughter, like 17, keeps finding him, you know, half a burger, nude, drunk, yeah. passed out. And, and <gasps> you don't to want to it, see your dad like that. No, and to top no. it off, he thinks she's a shark. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> That's no idea. Uh, shall we have a look and see Let's if Magda is right? Say, I do follow David Hasselhoff's career very closely. Mm. <gasps> Everything he touches turns to cheese, like bad. Oh, he just. Did you see him singing My Way recently at a concert? It's worth YouTubing. <laughs> <laughs> this, this, this is a guy who was so pissed in the 80s, he, he thought his car could talk to him. <laughs> Shut up! Shut up, car! David Hasselhoff has been treated in hospital after another alleged tangle with the booze. Paramedics know the Hoff's been on a bender when he can no longer pronounce his own name. Hoffel Hasselhoff. <laughs> Hasselhoff. Sassel David Sassel David Hoffel David The Hoff is currently working as a judge on America's Got Talent, where he keeps awarding points to acts the other judges can't see. <laughs> Isn't it, isn't it ironic that he's on a judge of America's Got Talent when he's got none himself? No. <laughs> uh, Hasselhoff was saved by his teenage daughter calling paramedics after what was reported to be a day-long vodka binge. The binge was sparked off after he accidentally listened to one of his albums. <laughs> <laughs> But the Hoff swears he wasn't drunk and it was all a misunderstanding over an ear problem. His ears were full of vodka. <laughs> over there, 30 points, over there, 30 points. After the break, we bring in the bin. The bin. <laughs> this is seven things for the game. <laughs> This is Seven Things for the Bin, the game where we loosen our belts and let fly. Mikey Robbins, yes. what do you want? Tossed on the tip and never spoken of again. Michael Jackson. <laughs> <laughs> Apparently, still dead. 
You know, Fermi's in trouble when Latoya's the sane one. <laughs> uh, I'd like to. Well, it's, it's the police that got done for the nerdy run. I don't want to. I don't want to throw them in the bin. I want to throw their dismissal in the bin. I just. I mean, I know they're police and they did something technically illegal. But what they should do is they should just be made to go round to the houses of anyone they ever arrested for indecent exposure. Knock on the door and just go. Sorry. <laughs> I'm sick and tired of hearing about dust storms. Dust storms stopping. I was loving dust storms. Visibility was so poor, I was asking girls out and they were saying yes. More dust storms. More. All right. This is not in the news and it's a tenuous connection because I'm going with walks, but I want to complain about cyclists in Lycra on Beach Road. What is that about? Excuse me. I don't mind if you're riding to commute, if that's the point of what you're doing, but if you're riding for exercise, a four-lane highway is not your gym in which for you to exercise. Perhaps I could take my car and drive around your backyard. <laughs> and I don't want to be in my car and have to look at your sweaty lycra bum raised in the air. <laughs> when there is a bike path, taxpayer-funded one metre away. Ride your stupid bike on the stupid bike path! I'm sick of lane bullies who come over into your lane in their big V8 black cars with their with silly windows all blacked out. I can't bear them. And I've got, they don't go anywhere near me because I've got a 2001 Challenger. And the uh, <laughs> challenge is to get it to the end of the street without having to fill it with petrol. But I'm sick <laughs> and tired of bullies on the road. Stop bullying. Get your blinker on or I'm going to hurt you. Forward slash kill you. I've got no issue with it. Uh, thank you, sure. Yeah, look. Yeah, I'm sick of these magazines, like gossip magazines, not reporting the real stuff that's going on out there. Like the World Mustache Championships. Last week, they were on in Europe. A bloke from Denmark came third, he was brilliant, had a big twirly one. There was a guy from Belgium with a double decker who came second, and that South African runner came first, that woman. And you gotta report that! Report that! Just one more thing with the, the bike people, you know, the, the men in the like. What is that? with coming into cafes with your tip-tap shoes. <laughs> Take off your tip-tap shoes! All right, having a big red dust storm is fine, but what I don't like hearing about ah. are all the theories! All the theories that people have as to why it's happened. Oh, it's Armageddon, it's climate change, it's this. I've got a theory for you. I reckon a giant redhead bent over and did a fur. You know what it is? <laughs> it's my big red theory. Jez, I don't have another magazine, but I just want to say, you know you're cyclists. Thank you. Thank you. When you're at, first of all, if you're going round the corner and you've got it on that stupid speed where it's just spinning, 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 and I can't get past you, put it in a different gear and move on. Secondly, when you're at the lights, don't balance like that. Get off your bike! I didn't actually mean anything, I just said I, I have got PMT. <laughs> so does oh. Tom. <laughs> My ovaries are throbbing. <laughs> in fact, he is, he, he is South Africa's greatest runner. <laughs> Here's what I want to throw in the bin, because there's not many things that annoy me truly, actually, but this does. Uh, journalists hand gestures. I'm sorry, but nobody I've ever met actually talks to me like this. <laughs> Hi Claire, welcome to our house. Would you like a cup of tea? It's so nice to see you. <laughs> I'm throwing that in the bin. I'm not going to throw this magazine in the bin because I haven't read it yet. And <laughs> I'm going to totally pilfer it and take it with me. But um, just on the bikes. 
Yes, yes. What about everybody saying we deserve our slice of the road, it's as simple as that, but then not following any road rules yes. and going yes. straight through the red light yes. and just nearly knocking people over. I'm sorry, but it, it totally infuriates me. <laughs> <laughs> Number plate them, find them. Yeah, absolutely. Number plate them, find them. No, no. Just what? drive and take them out. <laughs> Just take them. Open the door. Open the door. Take that. This is quite heady, this experience of it this is. collective free. rage. It is. It's very free. It is very free. It is. You know what the sad yeah. thing is? I do this on recycling night just on my own in the street <laughs> with no audience. I just get you. Just <laughs> I had heard that. I did actually. I, that. I bought a bike in December. Can I? Have... You. Hey, hey, how many times have I got to tell you? <laughs> it's a TV show. You're not at home in front of your box car. <laughs> oh, no, no, you could be. I've had enough of dickheads in our audience to feel they're at home in front of the box watching television and feel they can talk to us. It's like we've got one idiot over here, we've got one idiot over there, we've got one idiot down the front. It's like a Bermuda Triangle of stupidity. <laughs> Any sensible idea gets lost in that vortex of dumbness. I'm over it. Put a muzzle on it. Keep it down. Uh... Thank you. Jesus Christ, there's no respect anymore. <laughs> no, 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 no. We've been doing this for Oh, stop cackling like a witch. <laughs> sick of your cackle as well. I'm sick of hearing... <laughs> uh, is this seriously between you and the giant fairy penguin up the back there? <laughs> and we have been doing this at a professional level for a number of years. A bit of respect, please. <laughs> stop clutching your heart like that. You're not having a heart attack. <laughs> <laughs> Get your hand away from your breast, woman. What are you doing taking the Pledge of Allegiance? <laughs> oh, my face hurts. Had enough of our audience, I really have. Actually, you know what? I'm going home. I would like to bin forward slash kill whoever <laughs> is in charge of mobile phone company accounts keeping. They overcharged me $2,800 for my monthly telephone bill this month. I rang them, we sorted it out, and then they took the money out of the account on Friday. I'm going to hunt you down and I'm going to stab you like Buffy the Vampire Slayer. <laughs> They're the undead, though, aren't they? I'm sick of hearing about iPhones. Every second bastard has an iPhone. Oh, look, woo, 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 it's got a lightsaber. Shove the lightsaber in the iPhone up your ass. And you know what I'm sick of? People keep pulling out iPhones on the table and you might just be doing a bit of good old-fashioned bullshitting. Oh, what was Sean Connery's last film? I don't know, maybe it was Diamonds of Forever. Maybe it's whatever. They pull out their iPhone and they're fingering it like a spastic with a sandwich. <laughs> Hang out. Turns out Sean Connery did a film in whatever, and this year, and it turns out the humidity in Botswana is 78.9 percent. Who gives a shit? An iPhone is like a penis, right? It's fun to play with when you're on your own, but it's rude to pull it out at the dinner table. This is that special time when we do the mime. Tom Gleeson, front and centre. You were great during the bin. Yeah, thank you. That was you. corker. Yeah, it's just good to get it out, really. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Sometimes during the week I just practise on a tree. You know, just yell at it. <laughs> you and your leaves! <laughs> All right. Here's That's hard mid. to mind. That yeah, 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 yeah. Well, there's a number of them. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
And you say, <laughs> how do you pretend to be that or someone from that? Um, yeah, hey, how are you doing? I've got a couple of hours away, my hair, buddy. That's how I do that. <laughs> but it's mine, of course, so you just go. <laughs> yeah, do it one at a time. Each word. Has he started? Yeah, it's a sinker. <laughs> Thanks, Your time starts now. All right. <clears throat> right. Yeah. Pull down the blind. The blind. Oh, map. 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 Map of Aussie. Australia. Australia. Ma map of Australia. Yeah, I know. Map of Australia. <laughs> Which bit? Queensland. 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 Yeah, top. Top right. Queensland. So is that it? Queensland Minister. <laughs> <laughs> Queensland. Queensland men, country men. Farmer? Farmer. Queensland farmer. <laughs> Queensland farmer, where's my sheep? Where what is that? Finds. Finds a uh, stick. Stick. Dead something. Dead, finds a snake. Dead, dead snake? Dead snake. Dead snake. Finds a dead snake. To you that at this point in time, this is barely a news story. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Queensland, Queensland Palace has found a dead snake. Thinks. In his head. No. Yeah. And he thinks. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Thinks so. <laughs> that the, the dog. Dog. Ate it. Killed it. The dog. Yes. That's it. That's not That's all not of the it. Whole story. No. Well, the so he thinks the dog's killed it. Yeah. So he sucks the poison out of his dog. <laughs> no. So he goes so for a walk, he walks along. He sees, sees another one. No. Sees something else. He something sees, horrible. He sees a dog. <laughs> a, 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 a vicious. A rabbit. <laughs> he sees a rabbit killing another snake like it. <laughs> And then the dog? And then... No dog. No dog. Rabbit. And the rabbit. And the rabbit. He <laughs> kills another one. <laughs> so, so, a Queensland farmer's got a rabbit that kills snakes? Yeah. Oh, is that? <laughs> Can you put the whole thing together from start to finish? Yeah, yeah. In, in, in Queensland, a, a, a farmer saw a, a, a rabbit... Uh, Kill not one, but well, you saw one dead snake, and you saw a rabbit take out another one. Thanks. Yeah, Close enough. Right. Close enough. Good. <laughs> Paul. Yes, Matt. Just to uh, step behind the performance a little bit. <laughs> uh, <laughs> when I was in character as the rabbit, yeah. I was in my own mind. This is a rabbit, like. Yeah. You were right? furious. But to try to imagine being angry and vicious, I imagined myself with the Khaleesi virus. I was like. <laughs> <laughs> That's how I've got that kind of... It worked. Bit of mixo, totally. bit of mangy mixo going on, a bit of mixomatosis. Even your eyes went a bit pink. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it was good, it felt good. Oh, yeah. It's all true. There were two rabbits and they killed a king brown snake in minutes. As Tom said, looks like the Khaleesi virus had some side effects after all. Uh, but still, Watership Down 2 is going to be awesome. <laughs> Some scientists believe rabbits actually use snakes for their own purposes. When you see a huge python with a rabbit in its belly, it's not eating the rabbit. The rabbit is using the python as a portable burrow. <laughs> uh, I'll tell you what, though. Hey, kids, now the Easter Bunny's scary. Uh, even more bizarre, there are now stories of rabbits being killed by vicious, unpredictable lettuces. <laughs> You know where this is heading? No. Ultimate feral smackdown. <laughs> Rabbit versus cane toad. One bite and you've got a psycho bunny hopped up on toad juice who'll make Ben Cousins on ice look like Gandhi. <laughs> do you, can you, do you think with your acting experience you could mm. do the angry lettuce as well? The angry lettuce? How yeah, yeah I can do that. The, these are the leaves, by the way. Right. <laughs> They usually look like that just after they've been pulled out of the ground. Yeah. You, know, you pull them out, they've still got the roots dangling. You know. yeah. <laughs> Is that an iceberg? Or a, oh, or no, 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 a the iceberg's more like that. 
I was actually doing rocket. That's the weird thing. <laughs> bitter, bitter and angry. <laughs> Tom Gleeson. Coming up, more mine. So you think you can mime Ed Cavalier? Ah. Foley. Eddie. You don't have to worry about rabbits. <laughs> The last bit, the... Yeah, yeah. You concerned? Ah, it's been a while. <laughs> <laughs> OK. Take as long as you want. Well, we're... <laughs> <laughs> we're a little bit scared now. You, you, well, you, yeah, OK. <laughs> Ed Cavalli, your time starts now. OK. Snuggling. OK. You oh, correct. You're making Lovely. out with... You. Someone's making out with someone else. Pe love. Making love? Getting it on. Getting it on? OK. <laughs> Someone's getting it on. OK. Yeah. Do you know what I like? I like that when you make love, you make this face. Because <laughs> <laughs> he's making love with himself. <laughs> All right, I'm pitching. OK, OK, OK. okay. okay. So, okay. So. There's a... <laughs> You've got and the now, sexual act. Somebody's lifting a window pane. Li it's opening the lifting window. A, lifting a weight? Lifting oh, like something smelling. Smell. A toilet? Some, the, sm the toilet? Um, Put it, getting into the toilet. <laughs> They're having it off in the bathroom of a nightclub. <laughs> yeah. Jeez, you went to that one quickly. It's not a coffin. It's, it's a, a trunk. It's an old it's, chest. It's the boot of a car. It's, what? It's, a, it's a hose what the? in a thing. Oh, in garbage a... bin. Oh, <laughs> oh. oh. so they have having it off in the garbage yeah. in the in yes. a dumpster. Yes. 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 Them. Checking them out. Somebody notices. Yep. Yeah. Uh, and goes, oh, uh, my Hello. journey. Dum de dum de dum de dum de dum de dum. Hello. <laughs> Torch? Is that a phone? A fist. Camera. A... Oh, it's a knife! <laughs> I, it's, the, it's the people who were having it off in the dumpster and they got robbed at knife point. <laughs> Eloquent, erudite, perfect. You know what, Paul? That's how my parents met, so that was really easy for me. Because <laughs> the people were like, why were they having it off in a dumpster? And then I it's thought, hot. oh, because I remember him. I was thinking maybe <laughs> they were homeless. And you know how you say like, when you see people getting on, you go get a room. Well, when you say that to homeless people, you say get a room. Maybe that is a dumpster. <laughs> Would be. Well, you could be overthinking it slightly, but. <laughs> Look, if you want to join me in a dumpster, we can, you know, see... Experiment, yeah, see, yeah. see how it goes. But why not, not, not until the next dust storm? Have a big one. It'd be good if you were having sex in, uh, in a dumpster and you got to say, this sex is rubbish. <laughs> <laughs> yes, ladies and gentlemen, a middle-aged couple in Kansas have been robbed while sharing tender moments in a rubbish bin. Uh, and the headline read, Root rats rooted while rooting with rats. <laughs> Getting mugged at knife point while having sex in a dumpster. <laughs> Which part of that evening is a low point? <laughs> <laughs> the lovers were surprised by the mugging, especially after they specifically put up a sign that said, if the dumpsters are throbbing, <laughs> don't come a robin. <laughs> Yes. At least the couple were practising safe sex. They were using a condom. They found it in the yes. dumpster. <laughs> it's all right, they turned it inside right out. out. <laughs> now she's pregnant to some <laughs> other <laughs> fellow. Oh. oh, what's that about? Yes. Why would you do that? Yeah. Why would you go there? Have you finished with that? Pass it over. Oh. 
Paul, that is disgusting. Everyone knows that the alternate inside out trick only works with a chip packet. <laughs> actually, actually, mind you though, the good thing about turning it inside out is you get ribs for your pleasure. <laughs> <laughs> you brought us here. Yeah. Uh, is it always like this on this show? Is it, it always like this? It's pretty stupid, yeah. yeah. Uh, them now on 67 points, them on 63 points. <laughs> Strange but true is next. Time to wrap up the business we call Strange But True. Mikey, Julia, Tom, you had the visitor. Ooga, booga, 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 booga. <laughs> the placard. Uh, and I've got some sort of try and boom, boom. Maybe boom. I'm bringing him in, I don't know, but I'm, yeah, go back to where you came from. Yeah. And finally, Tom. I need the help of my good friends from Blue Juice. Yeah. <laughs> Records in the stores. Yeah. When do you start the tour? Oh, October. Is it? October. The start. I think so. Good. Bad. One of us has a day. For that tour, are you going to learn your lyrics? Or just... <laughs> we'll, we will be doing it's... most of our own songs. Yeah, so, but yeah. surprisingly, we do forget them a lot. Jake Stavin, Jerry from Blue Juice. <laughs> what is the story? Does anyone know what the story is? Story. It's, a ma it's a magnificent story. It is. It's, it's pretty um, obvious. Uh, an alien oil. has replaced Peter Garrett in Midnight Oil. <laughs> there have been huge protests. Yes. <laughs> it's a South Australian story about um, a mine. And a bunch of, uh, what, what's, what's the word for them? Uh, whack jobs. <laughs> <laughs> Who are, are protesting against the mine because they think it, it's going to attract... Aliens. Aliens, that's they right. They think it's going to attract aliens. Mikey, it's, it, I think you'll find it's really hard to be judgmental mm -hmm. with the silly hat on. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much. You do have it. In South Australia, a group called UFOSA wants a halt to the expansion of the Olympic Dam uranium mine. They say it could lead to the extinction of mankind by aliens. <laughs> but not all aliens are against uranium mining, only the green ones. <laughs> <laughs> UFOSA wrote to the state government to plead their case. It was the second such letter, the first being sent back because it was written in Klingon. <laughs> But they can complain as much as they like. As everyone knows, in Adelaide, no one can hear you scream. <laughs> Come on, if a nuclear bomb could be a threat to aliens with light speed and, and heat rate, that's not possible, is it? It's like a developed nation feeling threatened by a leaky boat full of illegal aliens. <laughs> Claire, Ed, Magda, you had the experiment Incredible. Oh, oh my god. Oh. And they're, they're attracting my hands. Oh my god. And I hate to tell you, that is what happens with age. <laughs> uh, we also have the rodent. <laughs> How'd you do that? Something I do. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> What's it feel like sailing the dizzy heights of success? Uh, <laughs> this is how I always mum. I've made it. I'm on telly. <laughs> This is a giant mouse, John Lennon. Yes. <laughs> Maybe you can feature footage of this on TV Burp. Mm. Yeah, yeah, we could. Yeah. If we were still on. Thanks, Tom. <laughs> <laughs> and finally this. I had a song, and um, which brings me to the very lovely Felicity Urquhart. <laughs> All right, this is the country rendition.
Elizabeth Urquhart. Do we have an answer? It's, an, it's a, a lab experiment with scientists, mice, magnets, learning to fly. Not the magnets, the mice. It's adorable. <laughs> Actually, it's not because they said the mice were so distressed they had to sedate them. So it's not really adorable. <laughs> oh, no, that's all right. That's cool. <laughs> Actually, no, they, yeah, the animals don't mind sedation. That means we can't hide our cheese high up anymore. <laughs> <laughs> that's right, yeah. Um, and it also explains nothing. OK, good. Um, basically, the, the scientists have created a kind of magnetic vortexy thing which will actually make the mice levitate. And, and no wonder they're disoriented. Poor little things. They're just like, all of a sudden, they can't touch the floor anymore. And they said, they said every now and then they'll kick off the side of the cage and they'll be out of the vortex and they'll drop to the ground again and, and then they'll accidentally get picked up again. So are there, are there magnets? Oh, you want anything to be working in this lab. Are there magnets? <laughs> Have the mice swallowed? No, no it uses the water that's in the mouse's body and the magnets work on that and levitate it. And they create, create this experience, they, they become weightless. So what's the point of it? Why are we trying to learn yeah. to... What happened is they've already built some levitating mouse traps. <laughs> so they were just trying to get them up in the... They have it, ladies and gentlemen, they do have it. Lovely. At the University of Missouri, a NASA research team using nothing but magnetic fields has made a mouse levitate. Oh. And the technique is simple. The scientists put the mouse in a specifically designed chamber and the magnetic field lifts all the water inside the mouse's body, carrying the rest of the mouse screaming along with it. <laughs> uh, and you have to be careful. If the magnetic field is too strong, you end up with a dehydrated mouse husk and a small cup of floating mouse water. <laughs> the levitation didn't cause any harm, but it freaked the hell out of the lab cat, who now thinks mice have bird technology. <laughs> And then the mouse rose above his cage. He saw the scientists and the lab and was possessed by a great calm and he realised he'd been chosen by the one true mouse god. <laughs> then someone sewed a big ear on his back and the confusion started all over again. <laughs> Stay tuned, Vertical Vermin. Fast Money is next to take us out. Felicity Urquhart. Fun for the whole G20, Kevin Rudd's Fast Money. Oh, oh. Right. Oh, God, In Naples, an alleged mafia boss had an unusual but effective way of getting people to settle their debts. What was it? Crocodile. Thank you very much. <laughs> yes. <laughs> he would threaten them with these crocodiles. Fantastic. If they didn't pay up, they'd get a is one Is that a euphemism or is that factual? His crocodile, no, a real crocodile. His actual a crocodile. 1.7 metre, metre crocodile. Wow. Sick it on him. <laughs> In Greece, a man has been arrested while harvesting 42 marijuana plants up to 1.8 metres tall. Where was he growing these plants? The median strip. Thank you very much. <laughs> yeah. Fine. Fine. Imagine when the council comes to clean it up, you're like, no, 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 please don't know that. Please. <laughs> OK, in Michigan, two policemen who were planning a surprise demonstration for high school students ended up causing a bit of trouble. What went wrong? Gun went off. No. <laughs> That they got arrested for being on school property? No. Arrested the village people? No, no. No. It no. can happen to anyone! <laughs> Did you say that the police were organising a surprise demonstration? No, what I said was, uh, yeah, they were planning a surprise Where? demonstration. Well, to well, show that you're not a surprise demonstration, like, uh, oh, but they were demonstrating demonstrating. a surprise. Oh, I thought oh. they were demonstrating against surprise, like, we're anti surprise and there are lots of police there. <laughs> Going, say no to surprises. Let's oh. be predictable. You know, Can you just tell us the answer? Uh, well, 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 no one knows the answer. <laughs> was it they were demonstrating about... It was a demonstration, like a strike demonstration? No, it was that they were demonstrating something for the students. 
Oh, oh. Christ. The tasers. Did they taser again? No. no they started when the cops were seen putting on stocking masks for a mock oh. robbery, oh. and yeah. it ended up with the evacuation of 180 students. <laughs> I was it, it the, oh. they put stockings on their heads? Let it go. <laughs> In Taiwan, scientists are developing an artificial organism they hope will be cute, friendly, artistic and attracted to humans. What is it? It's not It's not the robot nurse, is it? It's very close to the robot nurse, but it's not the robot nurse. Is, there, is it the robot prostitute I've been working on for years? <laughs> <laughs> How is that going? Yeah. <laughs> oh, bits keep falling off. <laughs> She's not too good either. <laughs> Trying to make a robot baby. Very close. It's cute, friendly, artistic, and attracted to humans. A, 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 a cuter than a puppy. There's nothing cuter a than a puppy. Uh, uh, a kitten. A ki What's um, the cutest animal on the face of the planet? A oh, oh, baby. God damn it! <laughs> <laughs> uh, robot panda. Robot panda. Oh. They're gonna make a robot panda. Oh, <laughs> and it you. solves crimes too. Robot panda. <laughs> Imagine doing that and then you only make like three robot pandas so that they're, you know, really rare. <laughs> <laughs> so that they're endangered. You want your robots to be endangered so you only make three. And then they don't breathe. Rare. You're like, oh, come on, yeah. build another one. They won't build another one. No. <laughs> and then they break because they're made in Taiwan. <laughs> in Croatia, a man who was away from home on a business trip was caught cheating by his wife. How? A uh, radio show. Yes, thank you. Can you explain to everyone? Oh, yes, yes. Oh, but basically, though, it was one of the classic things where the jock made a prank call. <laughs> and uh, a woman answered, he said it was his wife. His wife was on the other line. Oh. And now he's working today with him. So in the cathedral tonight, Mikey Robbins, Julian Morris and Tom Gleeson scored a saintly oh, 92 points. Oh. Trouncing Claire Hooper, Ed Cavalier and Magda Shabansky on 77 points. That's OK. Oh. That's a lot. That's a lot of points. We'll do the next better. And so many medals. 10.com.au slash GNW is where you get the podcast, the extra good bits and a copy of the new Julian Morris album and they call it Dumpster Love. <laughs> It's scratch and sniff. <laughs> <laughs> so we say thank you and good night, Larry Gelbart, and leave you with the good news for the week ahead. The chief executive of the CSIRO will address the National Press Club to talk about their spin off organisation, CSIRO Miami. That's <laughs> <laughs> good. Federal Minister Tanya Plibersek will speak on housing affordability. Apparently, if you're a federal minister, houses are very affordable. <laughs> Daylight saving begins in New South Wales, Victoria, the ACT, Tasmania and South Australia. Queenslanders! <laughs> Western Australians and Territorians can remain oblivious to the skills required to set a clock. <laughs> Uh, Sydney will be the scene of the Australian Health Congress, the burning issue on everyone's lips, herpes. <laughs> <laughs> and the Bureau of Statistics will release the national tourism figures. Apparently, it looks pretty good if we count Christmas Island. <laughs> good night. <laughs>